P53 is a tumor suppressor gene, so its actions prevent tumors from forming. P53 is called to action when there is DNA damage. Its malfunction can lead to cancer through the loss of regulation of the cell cycle. Mutations in P53 underlie 50% of all human tumors, and its reintroduction into tumor cells results in cell cycle arrest or apoptosis. Fortunately, we have two copies of this gene in each cell, one from each of our parents. Mutations are recessive, and, like with other tumor suppressor genes, both alleles need to be corrupted to lose normal p53 function. Normally, it is very unlikely for two such events to happen in the same cell, except for in those who might have inherited one faulty allele at conception. Another exception is the occurrence of a dominant negative mutation, a mutation which prevents the still normal allele from functioning. Since an important part of the carcinogenic mechanism is the accumulation of mutations, it is important for p53 to act soon after genomic damage first occurs. It can't be overstated how important p53 regulation is. Overexpression would mean unnecessary apoptosis, while underexpression can result in cancer. So how does the cell keep this protein under control? Well, in a cell lacking DNA damage, P53 is highly unstable, and its concentration does not build up. This is thanks to the protein MDM2, which binds P53, marking it for ubiquitin-mediated degradation. The MDM2 protein itself is not degraded and can be reused for other P53 proteins. However, when DNA damage occurs, P53 and MDM2 get phosphorylated, and MDM2 does not bind to it. As a result, P53 sticks around and its concentrations build up and cause cell cycle arrest. Typically, it will halt progression of the cell cycle at the G1 stage. It does this through the induction of P21, which inhibits CDKs 2, 3, 4, and 6. You can learn about cyclins and CDKs in another one of my videos, link in the description. But, in short, the cyclin D, CDK4, and cyclin D, CDK6 compounds phosphorylate RB, which is an important step to get into S phase. P53 also puts the brakes in getting through S phase by decreasing expression of cyclin A. Once the cell cycle is halted, the cell attempts to repair the DNA. However, if DNA damage is too extensive to be repaired, then more drastic measures need to be taken. Hence, P53 triggers either permanent cell cycle arrest or apoptosis. It can do this by directly activating the transcription of genes known to promote apoptosis, as well as by transactivating several components of the apoptotic effector machinery. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It would help me make more videos. And make sure to comment with any topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. Also, it would be really nice if you could support me on Patreon. Thank you.